for all the college students out there looking for internships and jobs. The biggest shift that is happening nowadays is that companies have started asking for LinkedIn profiles as a part of the application process. To shed some light on how to optimize and build a strong LinkedIn profile in order to catch the attention of recruiters, we invite today Austin Henlein. He is what we call a LinkedIn aficionado who uh, also guides students on how to leverage their LinkedIn profiles to get a job. He talks with us on various different topics like the importance of LinkedIn, how to build a personal brand, the content strategies that he used when he started and a lot more. So sit back, relax and watch the video till the very end. With that said, let's begin with the episode. Hi Austin, uh, it's a pleasure to have you on our channel and uh, before we start with the interview, can you please give uh, our audience an introduction about yourself, uh, your hobbies, goals and also your ambitions for the future? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, thanks so much for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Um, yeah, a little bit about myself. So I'm Austin Henline. I graduated from college from the university in May. So it's been about three months, four months since um, I graduated college. Um, I'm currently working at LinkedIn as a BLP sales associate. Uh, so pretty much that's uh, introduction rotation program to LinkedIn. Uh, I got really interested in LinkedIn about two and a half years ago. Um, I was applying to jobs and I got rejected by literally every single company that I applied to because they all asked for my LinkedIn profile and it was really bad. Like I had nothing on my LinkedIn profile. Um, so yeah, that experience kind of showed me like, wow, I should probably start using LinkedIn more often. And right. in the next two and a half years, I received over 250 job offers on LinkedIn um, from different recruiters. I learned, I spent a lot of time optimizing, creating content, et cetera. And so that's kind of how I got excited and interested in LinkedIn. Um, and outside of work, you know, I love playing sports. Um, particularly, I play a lot of golf and tennis. Uh, also really enjoy basketball. Um, not a good player because I'm not, you know, incredibly tall, but I, I think it's a fun pastime. Um, and also, as I, I'm married, so I spend a lot of time with my wife watching shows, you know, Netflix, etc., and in regards to my goals and ambitions, I currently don't have um, any thoughts of leaving LinkedIn. I really love LinkedIn because I think it's such a great product and the mission. And I think it'd be really cool to, I don't know how this would work out or what it'd look like, but I think, you know, as far as a goal, I really want to help college students and help people to learn how to utilize LinkedIn because right now it's not fully used and taught very well in um, the university system and education system. So I think that'd be a great goal to, to work on. That was a good uh, introduction from your side. Uh, so uh, let's start with the discussion now. So uh, people generally create a LinkedIn profile, uh, you know, when they start applying for companies to get a job. So uh, when do you think is the best time to actually, uh, you know, start building our LinkedIn profiles? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, from personal experience, I can say you should definitely create a LinkedIn profile before you want to create, uh, before you start applying for jobs, because in my case, I was applying and then it was too late. Um, so I started building up and it was, it probably took me about six to seven months to build up my profile to um, be better, you know, than what it was, because it takes time to send connection requests, find people that you'd like to build your network with, uh, right. optimize your profile. So I'd say a great time would be at least six to seven months before the jobs that you want to apply for open up. So um, instead of doing it like a week or two before, I would do it several months in advance. Yeah, so we should plan uh, on developing our profiles well in advance, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
So uh, also, can you uh, shed some light on what are the other benefits of using LinkedIn uh, bes only besides, you know, job hunting? Yeah, that's a fantastic question as well. Um, job hunting is clearly the one that most people think of when it comes to LinkedIn. But I personally haven't used LinkedIn for job hunting purposes in about two years, you know. Um, the reason why I use LinkedIn are for a lot of different reasons. Um, one is personal branding. Um, I love creating content because it helps a lot of people. Um, you know, maybe I started out really small and I'm still not big, like that big, you know, I, my goal is like with every post, even if it doesn't get a lot of likes or comments, if I can know that I'm at least helping one person, then I feel happy. Um, but as a result of that content creation, it's pushed me to um, be seen by millions of people um, at thousands of different companies. Uh, it also helped me to get invited to a TEDx talk. Um, I was creating content and then a TEDx curator noticed my content and invited me to speak at a TEDx event. Um, also, a lot of friendships. I've met a lot of great people online um, on LinkedIn that I otherwise would have never have met. And then also opportunities like this, you know, speaking with you right now is a result of LinkedIn as opposed to just searching for a job. So those are just several of, you know, a few of many reasons why I think LinkedIn is a fantastic place to be. Right, very true. Uh, so uh, the basic norm is to, you know, uh, for, a, for applying in companies, we create a resume. But uh, recently, uh, the companies have started asking for LinkedIn profiles along with the resumes uh, as a part of the application process. So uh, what is the basic difference between creating a resume and a LinkedIn profile, given that we had the same information on both of them? Yeah, um, first of all, uh, LinkedIn profile doesn't have a page limit. Um, if you took and if you copy and pasted all of the information on my LinkedIn profile and put it into a Microsoft Word doc, I would say I probably have 11 pages worth of information as opposed to just one. And the reason why that is, is because um, instead of having a tiny paragraph uh, to introduce like your summary or what you're interested in, you can have up to, I think it's like 2,500 characters, which is a lot of characters. Um, so I have a fully um, built out about section. Also, you have a lot of space apart from just resume bullet points, you can give context. Um, you can talk about the companies. Uh, you can also show links. So for if you're applying for engineering, design, any sort of role, you can actually showcase your portfolio on your LinkedIn profile. But on a resume, you can't include those pictures or, you know, you can't include many details. So I think I, I have received a lot more job opportunities from my LinkedIn profile than my resume because it's not limited to how, how few characters or words I can include on it. And then also there's just a lot of links and you get to showcase your personality really well. Um, not to mention uh, it does really well in, in appearing in Google searches. So my resume doesn't appear in Google searches, but my LinkedIn profile does. Right, so it also helps in our SEO, like mm -hmm. the ranking in SEO. Yes, SEO is a big part of LinkedIn that maybe, you know, uh, that resumes aren't. Right. So uh, I would like to uh, I would like to want our audience to know that Austin has reviewed over 900 LinkedIn profiles. So uh, I would like to ask you, Austin, what are the most common mistakes that uh, people make while creating their profiles on LinkedIn, and uh, how can they avoid these mistakes to build a strong profile? Yeah, that's um, love that. I'd say one of the big a few mistakes that I frequently see is that people treat their LinkedIn like their resume. Um, and what I mean by that is it comes off as distant or not very personal. Um, they use third person language uh, of like, oh, created this or like in the about section, it says like, 
detail oriented professional seeking a, um, a job in a fast paced environment or uh, with data analytics skills. You know, it's like not very personal, but with a LinkedIn profile, you want to use it, create it in the first person. So like, hi, you know, my name is Austin. Um, I went to school at Brigham Young University and studied sales. Um, you know, throughout my career, I've experienced a lot of hardships, a lot of like mistakes, but this has helped me to grow in this, you know, introduce personality. Like, this is what I love to do. I'm more than just my resume. So that's one thing is instead of having it in the third person, um, talk in the first person, say, use I, um, share your hobbies, goals, interests. Um, another thing is it's clear that a lot of people don't actually Google <laughs> um, how to create a good LinkedIn profile. And the reason why I say that is because the way that I started is just, I watched a lot of videos and Googled a lot about how to create a LinkedIn profile. And literally every single Google um, or every single article on Google talks about optimizing your headline or having a great po profile picture or um, how to fill out your experience section. So when a recruiter looks at your profile and sees that you haven't changed your headline or um, you haven't done this, it shows like, oh, they've never really spent time on Google, you know, learning how to create a LinkedIn profile. Um, right. So I, th I think that's a big thing is like, show that you've done your research and make your profile with keywords and make it, you know, interesting, like not boring to read, tell stories. So uh, I would like to ask, uh, are there any, uh, you know, things, other things like keywords, which we can include in our profile uh, and especially for job seekers who want to like uh, catch the attention of recruiters? Yeah. Um, few things. Uh, as far as keywords, I would take five to 10 job descriptions that you are interested in applying for. So for example, I was a manufacturing or not manufacturing. I was a medical device engineer recruiter for a year. So I recruited manufacturing engineers, R and D engineers, et cetera. Um, and so with that, I would recommend taking five to 10 of those job descriptions that you're interested in and putting it in something called a word cloud on in Google, which pretty much you copy and paste one job description. And then it tells you all of the words that are really common are very used in that. So in R and D, let's say it says like, oh, you should know, um, or if it's a computer science skill, um, R, C++, um, SQL, uh, know how to do Python, or let's say one of them says a lot like data analytics or right. um, SolidWorks. So pretty much do that for five to 10 job descriptions. And let's say seven or eight of the job descriptions all say that I should know Python or I should know SolidWorks or I should know whatever skill then those are the keywords that I'm going to take and put it into my profile. If I don't know it, I'm going to take courses, you know, watch things, watch videos, start learning how to use it um, and learn how to develop that skill. And then try to include it in your headline, your about section, your work experience section, and your skills section at the bottom of your profile. So those four sections are very heavily impacted by your SEO. So the skills that you want to be seen for, try to include them in those four sections. Right, so our viewers, you can make notes because this is uh, <laughs> a lot of uh, insightful information. Uh, also, uh, in our previous uh, question, you talked about personal branding and professional branding, right? So uh, creating content on any kind of platform falls under the domain of personal branding, right? So how does one establish their personal brand on LinkedIn? Yeah, I think um, an important thing about personal branding on LinkedIn is it should, for example, you know, um, on YouTube or something, you can create content literally about anything or about like funny fail videos or whatever you want on LinkedIn. 
people are there because they they're there with a professional mindset you know either they're looking for jobs um they want to hire someone you know everyone is there with a similar interest and that is revolved around work related so i think an important thing about creating content on linkedin is in some way or another it should it should um be helpful or create value um so like it could fall under the umbrella of motivation, you know, maybe some job seekers are just really um, overworked or a lot of people feel imposter syndrome. So it could be words of motivation or encouragement, like, Hey, you got this, like, keep going, keep pushing or uh, stories of encouragement. Like, yeah, I applied to a hundred jobs and I got rejected by every single one of them. It's like, Hey, you're not the only one who's experiencing this. I am too. Like, it's okay or you could also give tips. That's what I usually focus on, but that's my personal brand is I focus on LinkedIn tips and recruiting tips, um, mostly for college students because I've seen that uh, college students don't have a lot of content to learn right. from. Um, so that's what I've chosen to focus on. But I'd say in some way or another, like someone reading or who wants to establish a personal brand should know who, they're, who they want to target and like, right. what's the takeaway? Like, how can I help them? Right. So we should, uh, you know, have uh, a fair idea of our target audience. And uh, we should also have consistency with our vision. A lot of people, a lot of time we see uh, people like Zach Wilson, who is a, you know, tech lead at uh, uh, Airbnb, posting about mental health or even entrepreneurs uh, posting about their personal life and experiences. So uh, is it beneficial for them as they are, you know, transitioning away from their core background? So uh, what are your thoughts on this? And also, uh, should students, uh, as you said, uh, should they focus on just posting content about uh, whatever topic they like or uh, should uh, they stick to their core background? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you asked this question because my previous answer might have sounded like I'm like, oh, you should only stick to creating value or you should only stick to a core value. But I don't believe that is the case. Um, I think, yeah, I post about LinkedIn recruiting tips, interviewing tips a lot, but I also post about things that, um, you know, I've posted things in the past about my wife or I've posted things in the past about my personal life or just stories, you know, um, and in those cases, I think that people want to learn more about who you are as a person as well, because um, it's easier to relate to. Um, so you can share personal stories, you can share experiences. Um, and so with that being said, um, from what I've seen from a lot of content creators, people usually have four to five topics that they rotate between. So um, let's say your topic could be, for example, mine is LinkedIn. I talk about LinkedIn. Another one is interviewing. I talk about interviewing. Another one is recruiting. And then another one I talk about is informational interviews. So I rotate between those four to five things a lot. And another one could be mental health. Like, yeah, this week I'm going to talk about mental health instead. Um, so I would say probably 80% of posts usually ref like revolve around a core but it's totally, I love it when people go out of their core and just share their thoughts or their experiences. And that is totally welcome on LinkedIn. Um, be, be encouraged to be yourself. Right. And it uh, also uh, increases the engagement. Like a lot of people relate with uh, your thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, for a person like me who has just started with creating content on LinkedIn, uh, you know, it is really hard to think of uh, content ideas. So I want to ask you, uh, what were your content strategies uh, when you initially started? I think this is too much information to take in for the first episode. But don't worry, we'll be right back with the second episode. So stay tuned for that. Meanwhile, you can check out Austin's LinkedIn profile. The link for the same would be in the description below. Also, make sure to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more such amazing content. Until next time, this is Weber Vijayvarya from the Leo Podcasts, signing off.